Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters, subscribers and viewers of the Three Day Islam channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, I highly recommend you do so. Peace be upon you all. I warmly welcome each of you. Before we begin this video, I want to say a few words. May Allah reward Brother Musa with goodness for the equipment he sent. The studio microphone I'm currently speaking through, uh, speaking through the chair and the lavalier mic for future interviews. All of this will help us develop the channel and create higher quality content. Many projects lie ahead. We are preparing, inshallah. May Allah reward all of you with goodness. In this video, I want to show and explain how I process and work with GPR ground penetrating radar data, or simply scans, so that you can better understand what's happening and how everything works. I hope you'll watch and listen attentively. The most interesting part is coming up, inshallah. I received a set of scans from Aslambek of the Russian Inventors Club channel. There are many files, but most of them are nearly empty. Some show faint traces, while others show nothing at all. Only one scan turned out to be fully viable, the one I focused on. It was taken over the first cave, exactly where the very first excavations began. This scan contains some data, and I'll try to clearly explain what it means. The file was recorded using a Protonelec GPR device. Format, it opens easily with a basic text editor. Just double click it. Inside are geodata, signals. These numbers are coordinates of points in space along the X, Y, and Z axes. The GPR sends a magnetic pulse underground. If there's a void beneath the surface, it reflects the signal. If there's no void, the wave continues deeper into the rock and gradually fades. The signal strength depends on the radar model, as well as soil type, rock density, moisture, and other factors. These signals generate the point data we see as numerical values. To decode and visualize this data, a special program is needed. The first recommended one is Voxler. It allows you to gather the points and display them in 3D. That's exactly what I've been working on. But Voxler stubbornly refuses to render a clear, understandable image. I've studied it from all angles, watched tutorials, tried various methods, tested in different modes. In other videos, everything looks perfect. Underground voids and pipes are clearly visible. But for us, the result is totally different. To investigate, Walid and I went back to the mountains. By Allah's will, the weather was perfect. Neither rain nor blazing sun, ideal for scanning. The plan was to scan while moving forward, capturing data frame by frame along the path. We thought everything went fine, but later I noticed. One scan was only 720 kelbys, like a regular photo, but we intended to, re to record a full path series like a video. That file should have been 20 to 30 memebytes at least. Turns out our GPR model doesn't support path recording. Following Ilman's new advice, we began step by step, like like photos, take one scan, move forward three meters, take another, and so on. Then shift three meters to the side and continue. This way I can understand how the scanning is done and visually see our movement in space using 3D programs. But even here, failure, the starting coordinates in all files are exactly the same which means that when loaded into 3D software, all the points overlap instead of forming a proper spatial volume. I haven't fully figured out the reason. Most likely, it's due to the GPR model lacking path and GPS recording capability. The device simply doesn't have GPS built in. I spent a long time studying Voxler. As soon as I had time from work, I went back to the scans. One thought kept bothering me. Why does it display correctly for others? Models are clearly visualized, but ours shows nothing comprehensible. At that point, our brother and friend Ilman suggested another approach. Write a Python script and transfer the point cloud directly into Cinema 4D, the program where I usually build my 3D models. I really like this approach. After all, Cinema 4D also has a full 3D coordinate system. You place any object in space and the X, Y, Z axes are immediately visible. We transferred the radar data there, a point cloud of 16,386 points, and what we saw was very different from Voxler. The visual was completely new. 
Amazingly, artificial intelligence analyzing these points didn't just identify voids, but detected the cave itself. Moreover, it recognized two side chambers. We already discussed this in one of our previous videos. You can rewatch it. Everything is explained there in detail. So a full reconstruction is needed, but for now, the picture remains incomplete. One thing I know for sure, Cinema 4D transfers the coordinates exactly as they are in the original DAT file. Every point is in its correct place, with no distortion. But Voxler still doesn't show the same clarity. That gave me an idea. To truly understand how Voxler works, I decided to manually model an artificial cave in Cinema 4D. As you guessed, I used the same coordinates. In the object structure, you can see all the vertex coordinates. Then, export. We get a file with coordinates plus some extra columns. We open it in Excel, delete everything unnecessary, leaving only the XYZ data. Then we copy and paste the values into a plain text file. We save it as .txt, then rename it to .dat so Voxler reads it correctly. Then we load it into Voxler. Connect Grinder, then Isosurface. Enable the coordinate system to see scale. Add Volume Render for colors and activate Face Render. Now you can see the corner of our artificial cave. In Grinder, we adjust parameters, click Gridding. Volume Render shows the inner void correctly. In Isosurface, we fine tune the shape with the slider. When we turn off Isosurface, If there are too few points, we expand the range along the axes. With Face Render, we clearly see our model in 3D space, so everything works. Voxler displays correctly when the file is properly prepared. Two years ago, or more, I wanted to show you the cave in full 3D, its appearance, all the details, the terrain. Back then, I planned to do it in Cinema 4D using motion tracking, capturing video, marking points, and overlaying textures for full 3D visualization. But as usual, there were obstacles. No stabilization on the phone, poor lighting in the tunnel, which made the footage unusable, and other technical difficulties. And now, alhamdulillah, it finally worked. Brothers Walid and Sultan entered the tunnel, brought all the necessary equipment, and performed a full scan. And now, here it is. The cave, carved by human hands, meter by meter, with effort, patience, sweat, and perhaps with faith. Compared to the entire arc, it may seem small, but the amount of labor is enormous. Allahu Akbar. Dear brothers and sisters, by Allah's will, we strive to follow a scientific approach and provide the most accurate information possible. The work being done at the Ark of Nu, peace be upon him, site is truly massive and requires a systematic method. Our plans include conducting seismic surveys, scanning and visualizing the entire site, a complete 3D reconstruction of the arc, identifying voids, cavities, and anomalies, creating a detailed map of all rooms, what's where, where it leads, and where drilling is, is feasible. But as you understand, all this requires serious resources. Currently, we're financially limited, and without funds, even simple tasks can drag on for months. We also need to clear the cave, get fuel and firewood, buy additional equipment, and solve many other logistical and technical issues. We have brothers with substantial means, and their support alone could allow us to go deeper while the opportunity remains. Of course, inshallah, we won't give up. We hope for the best from Allah and for your support. Let each person who is able to help remember, this is not just a project, but potentially one of the greatest discoveries of our time. Truth doesn't always reveal itself immediately, but it comes to those who seek it sincerely, with patience and tawheed. May Allah bless this work, open the doors of assistance, and unite us in that which brings light to the Ummah. What will the Ark give us? What does it mean for the Shechen people and for Muslims worldwide? This is a very important question, and the answer goes deeper than it seems. Historical and Religious Confirmation If it's proven to be the Ark of Nuh, peace be upon him, 
it would be one of the greatest archaeological discoveries in human history, a confirmation of the events mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, an ayah, Allah on earth, a visible sign. Hashr 2. Strengthening Hearts Millions of people around the world read about Prophet Nuh, peace be upon him, but if they see the ark with their own eyes, it will strengthen hearts, especially the youth, who today are full of doubts and lost in the noise of information. They don't just need to read, they need to see. 3. Global Respect and Attention If it turns out this site is in Chechnya, the attention of the global scientific and religious communities will shift to our region. This will not only elevate Chechnya's reputation, but also stimulate growth in science, tourism, and education. 4. Unity of the Ummah The ARC project can become a point of convergence for the Ummah, people from different countries, madhabs, and cultures uniting with one intention to study, preserve, and share the truth. This is Dawa. This is the path to unity. 5. A response to accusations. Today, we're accused of lacking development, that Islam is far from science. But if it is Muslims who present a discovery of this magnitude, it will be a powerful response. Faith and knowledge are inseparable. Islam is light. And our deepest thanks to all our subscribers for your kind words, warm comments, likes, and reposts. Alhamdulillah, that too is a great help. Every like, comment, and repost helps promote the channel and spread this important information. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you, dear brothers and sisters. May Allah reward you in this life and in the Akhira. Amin. Если хочешь, я могу сделать эту же речь как субтитры или закадровый текст, готовый к монтажу. تزهر الأعشاب بعطر رقيق كأنفاس ربيع طهور عميق والريح تدفع سحب السماء نحو الجبال كأنها دعاء روعة الندى في فجر الصباح تزين الأرض كبحر من راح والطيور تغني منذ البكور أنشودة شكر تبهج الصدور الجبال والقلاء ثابتة في الزمان تحكي حكاية مجد وأمان أحبك يا أرضي يا موطن السلام يحفظك الله يا شيشان الكرام زهر الأعشاب بعطر رقيق كأنفاس ربيع طهور عميق والريح تدفع سحب السماء نحو الجبال كأنها دعاء دعاء روعة الندى في فجر الصباح تزين الأرض كبحر من رح والطيور تغني منذ البكو أنشودة شكر تبهج الصدور الجبال والقلاع ثابتة في الزمان تحكي حكاية مجد وأمان أحبك شيشان الكرام
بتة في الزمان تحكي حكاية يا مجد وأمان أحبك يا أرضي يا موطن السلام يحفظك الله يا شيشانك كرام